we're back, but we made this a separate one because we don't know if it's going to be able to stay up on the interwebs because we're going to talk of certain disease and the uh, protocols being recommended by uh, certain institutions. Again, and, and I don't even know what we're allowed to talk about anymore because the rules keep changing. So we're just going to go with it. And if it gets pulled down, I think I'll have it uh, I'll back it up on locals. I need to play with that a little bit more yeah. and rumble. Uh, so we're going to talk COVID. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. First, I want to bring some big, uh, some good news. Good-ish news. Uh, so because of my own experience, and uh, uh, the uh, I wanted to go down the 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 path of of what's being done about the permanent long haul effects. And uh, my own experience is is the headache and the brain fog and, oh. and that going on, and it and it still continues to this day. So uh, I wanted to see what was being done about that, and we actually have a lot of preprints of uh the research that's being done on it it's actually good scientific research because it has no political implications which is awesome so uh this article here in nature is the best summary i found of it all uh COVID in the brain uh they they uh zero on how the damage occurs and uh the great news is uh there was concern uh, from me and some other people uh, in the scientific community that uh, because it's a virus and it's obviously affecting the brain and the nervous system, that it was going to be something similar to herpes, where it lives in the nerve itself. And the only way to actually get rid of it is to kill the nerve, which is not uh, a viable option. And so if that's the case, again, similar to herpes, it, w w there was the worry that you would have flare ups that it, it was constantly living uh -huh. in your body and you would keep having flare-ups to cause this. And that's where the headaches and the, and the brain fog and everything would be coming from. That's not the case, which is awesome. So, so that's the good news. The bad news is it still might be permanent. Uh, so one of the big effects that they found was that it kills uh, these cells called the uh, astrocytes, which bring nutrients to the brain. And I'm trying to find the there's a picture of it right there, which bring uh, nutrients to the, to the neurons themselves. Uh, the other part, which is probably the, the biggest effect is it, uh, it damages the pericytes, not parasite, like a, like a, a bug in your system, but pericyte as the, the type of cell, which uh, is in the capillaries of the, uh, the blood vessels in the brain, which causes them to constrict and uh, you lose blood flow, flow to the brain, which is it, it's it's very basically a mild stroke if you really think about it yeah and then the last effect they found is that there's an autoimmune response which i think is going to be an individual thing if you tend towards autoimmune disease you're probably going to have this as a greater one but i think the biggest effect is the blood flow to the brain which is bad news because again it's like a mini stroke and if you allow that to keep going eventually those parts of the brain are going to die similar to a heart attack. But the good news is you, you dilate the vessels and you're okay. So when I feel a headache coming on now, I'll take a dose of, of niacin, which is vasodilator. And then I'm experimenting with other uh, herbal vasodilators that are, that are known to have a mild uh, uh, high blood pressure effect or low blood pressure effect. So we'll, I'll give you the results of that after they build up in my system. But, uh, but yeah, the niacin worked like a charm. The last time I felt a headache come on, I took a it, too, too big a dose because I got a flush as well. But, but the headache went right away and I got my cognition back. So, uh, so the, the, the good news is we kind of know what it is so we can combat it. And hopefully they're working on treatments to, to, to reverse the effects. Uh, the bad news is it's, it's not necessarily a great thing because if you allow it to go on, you could have permanent brain damage. Which, which is where, I'm, uh, uh, which is where the danger of the politicization of this stupid virus in the first place is mm -hmm. that um, it meant we didn't talk about treatment. Why? Because Trump bought up treatment and orange man bad. 
Um, no, and, there's a there's a bigger reason we didn't talk about treatment. Well, uh, I I just want to focus on and the this politics is, part of it because well, no, that's it, kind of my it's thing. It's political. Well, it's money. Uh, that, and, yeah. and, and politics as well. And yeah. this is where we're yep. going to go down the rabbit hole where it, we may end up getting banned. So, well, but what I mean is that just within within the media at large, uh, we didn't talk about treatment. I mean, we can talk about the 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 foundation of that is it is also an issue, but just in the media at large, there was little talk of treatment, uh, except as a shouting match about orange man bad or mega mega mega, mm -hmm. um, and so, and, and with what you're talking about, I mean, it seems obvious to me that the the quicker and more effectively you can treat someone, the less impact, uh, if not the ability to eliminate these long term consequences. Because mm -hmm. if, if, you're, if you're talking about uh, the, the death of brain cells, um, then you want as little of that as possible. Yeah, especially uh, that, where that, it is, because it comes yeah. through the olfactory membrane, because it can't get through the blood brain membrane in the, uh, uh, in the general part of the brain, but it comes through the olfactory membrane. That's why you lose your sense of smell mm -hmm. with, with COVID, but then can get into your, your, uh, your prefrontal cortex from there. And when I get the headache, it, it's like a spike going up through my nose and out right here. So it, it is very localized. It's not a general, a general headache or a throbbing pain like you would get with a, a sinus headache or anything. It is a spike going through my head in that direction. Uh, but at the same time, we don't know what the long-term implications are. So uh, shoot, we got Phineas Gage getting the actual spike going through his head that uh, <laughs> that destroyed that part of his prefrontal cortex and he, he ended up becoming an asshole. So <laughs> uh, we don't know how much damage is being done. How will we tell with you? <laughs> yeah, how would we tell? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, treatment. So, so here's, here's the part that, that's, that's very disturbing. If we, had, if we had found viable treatments in the beginning, they would never have been able to achieve an emergency use uh, objective for the vaccine. Because the only way that's possible is you don't have a viable treatment. And to me, that screams uh, the, 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 the money in the pockets of, yeah. of the lobbyists and the politicians of, we need this to create a very giant lucrative industry where you're buying hundreds of millions of vaccines from us uh so and and that actually for you trumpers out there that starts with trump operation yep. warp, warp speed the fact that it's flipped is only because the powers that be have flipped and yes. if trump had won in uh 2020 election the exact opposite fight would be happening right now. And, and that's we not all speculation and that's yeah. not speculation because that's what was happening in the spring early summer of that year mm -hmm. um the so-called anti-vaxxers are supposedly all MAGA people well the anti-vaxxers in the beginning were the democrats the democratic leaders elected democrats were literally saying if they manage to get a vaccine i don't know that i'm going to take it because we can't trust trump mm -hmm. that's what they were saying that was their talking point over and over and over again um, and what I was looking for is a guy, a, a, a columnist uh, by the name of John, John Ziegler. He, he had an uh, opinion column on Mediaite uh, back on July 12th. The, the, I, I just love the title. If the experts didn't want the reaction to COVID to be political, they shouldn't have played politics with it. And 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 to me, that's that's the prime example is how everything just flipped. And and with no. Uh, with no acknowledgement that it had happened. So for instance, one of the things he brings up in his article is that how early on um, Fauci was saying, no, nah, no, you don't, you don't need masks. Masks aren't going to help. That's, that's not what you should do for prevention. Uh, and it was in part because they were so worried that the, 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 the masks that really help uh, there, there was already a shortage and they were worried that they were just be complete run completely out of them if regular consumers started going out and getting them in a panic mm. and there was never an acknowledgement of that I, I, I you know i feel like you have 
a, a greater degree of validity to months down the line say, no, no, not only do masks help, but everybody needs to mask and now we need a double mask and all this other stuff that he said, you would have more validity in your subsequent statement if you would at least acknowledge that you made the contradictory statement. Mm-hmm. And he just goes on and pretends like it never happened, just like the the Democrats are now the the pro-vaxxers and the MAGA people, all the anti-vaxxers, and they're w- with no acknowledgement of what their prior statement was and why they've changed their mind. So well, to me, that, that is the epitome of politics. The Fauci situation is... Uh... I I guess I'm going to give my official stance on this is whether it ends up being a big deal or not. The fact that he was financially connected to it from the beginning should have been a disqualification for him in that position. Uh, Investigation to come later, whatever it should have disqualified him immediately because it it only plays to the anti-vax crowd. Because you yep. have something, you have a connection. He should have it, it should have been he should have been replaced from the beginning with an investigation to come later. Uh, just get him out of the situation because it, it plays to both sides of the crowd. He's a, he's a religious figure on the Vax crowd. Yeah. Uh, whereas uh, he he's he's a scapegoat for the anti-Vax crowd because of his connections. Uh, and the fact that Dazik wrote that that letter in the beginning, which became the fact check on, no, there's no Wuhan lab leak, blah, 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 blah. And yet he's the one that's funding it. So yeah, he, he was the one um, the guy who wrote the fact check was directly connected to it. I, when, when we way back when uh, when the Fauci emails were first released and I talked about it, I said I felt sorry for him because uh, he seemed like a decent guy. I no longer feel sorry for him, knowing what we know now. Um, and, and that's not just the the. The things that he knew he had to have known because he was authorizing the funding and the exemptions for and blah, blah, blah. Um, but just go back and look at, at his early pronouncements on AIDS. And this guy's a jack wagon. It, it is disturbing to me that uh, the best journalistic investigation on this whole thing was by Vanity Fair. But yeah. it is what it is. It is. They they had their moments in there where they tried to uh, spin it, keep keep their street cred and 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 dump Trump, uh, which you know he deserves some of it. Yeah. But uh, at the same time, the 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 play by play on the, the the funding and the uh, the the paper trail that goes along with it was actually really good. So yeah. I'm I'm glad that the article's out there. I, I hate that it's a it had to be in Vanity Fair and not in something we 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 typically read in a you know our google news feed or something Something that's going to be shared more readily by normal people rather than news nerds exactly um uh well in fact it kind of gets lost in the shuffle because most people that are reading vanity fair are not reading it for covid news uh and it's just kind of in there uh so he should have been removed from the beginning but uh i i think i should make my stance from a scientific perspective on vaccines very clear at the beginning of this before we go into the other thing uh and COVID in general and and this is coming again coming from somebody who's been through it possibly has permanent side effects from it and who would have known the toilet paper crowd was correct because the diarrhea was horrible (laughs) uh but uh My personal stance on vaccines as a preventative measure is if you have not had COVID, you should probably get the vaccine, even though there are a lot of unknowns that we still need to discuss and we can't know yet. Because the side effect numbers on that are still lower than the permanent effects from actually having the disease. So Mm -hmm. even though there are these things that they don't want us to talk about, that's that, that number is still lower than your effect from the disease. Yeah. And, and and again, that's why we should be having an open conversation, which is kind of our our main running theme here, uh, because what you see from the more conservative side, and and I, it's absolutely valid. 
uh, but it's incomplete uh, because what you'll see from a lot of the conservative side is, look, why are, why are we pushing young people to get a vaccine from a disease that is a statistical zero in death rate? Because it, and it is true. It is true that if you just look at death rate, people, I, I think, I think it's basically anyone under 40 has a, a higher probability of having an adverse reaction to the vaccine than of dying from COVID. That's true. But if we were having a more open conversation about it, we a would be talking about fix. we would be talking about what you're talking about because we're actually having a conversation, not coming up with talking points and shouting at each other. Because mm-hmm. yes, that's true. But there are uh, there are long term effects from COVID, and what are those numbers? Mm-hmm. Do those numbers still hold up? So okay, uh, I'm I am not even remotely in a high risk category. Uh, the, the people I'm around who are have already either had it or been vaccinated. So I'm not worried about being vaccinated for that reason. Are there other reasons I should be thinking about being vaccinated? I don't know because we're not allowed to have these conversations. Okay. Conversate or, or topic number two is with now that the evidence keeps pointing towards the lab leak, we probably had we had an adult conversation about this, should not have introduced an incomplete uh, sterilizing vaccine in the middle of a pandemic because you encourage uh, adaptation towards variants at that point. But, huge but here, we already did it. So we're Uh in it. Uh And so we actually need to complete the process as much as possible. So if you have not had COVID, and have uh, not had the vaccine, you probably should take it because we have to at least get as close to completing that process as possible because it's already there. We, we're, we're halfway, the country is about 49% vaccinated as of the last time I looked. Uh, it's already started. We've already pushed that, those variants. So that's, that's item number two. We probably should have had this discussion earlier and decided treatment versus vaccine and looks like in hindsight the the answer was treatment Mm -hmm. uh but again this is where the censorship and uh, everything kind of coalesces into uh into where we should have been having better conversation about this this whole thing and again where the money trails lead to we should have had different people in charge of it uh so that's, that's item number two. Item number three, if you've had COVID, the evidence suggests that you have at minimum the same immunity, and I'm going to bring up sources for this in this conversation, the same immunity as the vaccine, if not better, uh-huh. which we won't have data for that until these variants play out, because the better would be you have more, uh, you, you've had more exposure to different aspects of the virus versus just the spike protein. Uh, and so we'll, we'll see that when, when the Delta data comes in as far as reinfection. Uh, well, actually, I think we're all the way up to Lambda now, but Delta is the big one because it's the really contagious one. Uh-huh. Uh, so we're, 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 we're way into this process of variants. And so th- when that data comes out, we'll be able to make a, a, a better assessment of it. But with the current stuff we have for wild type, you are at minimum as uh, uh, immune, uh, you have an immune response to the, to the vaccine. Uh, the statement, uh, this is where language comes in. And remember, the people in charge of this are masters of language. If I say the word may, uh, the vaccine may give you longer protection than uh, having the disease all I need is one out of a million to, to make my statement true. I can tell you, I may win the lotto. Uh-huh. And if I go buy a ticket, I may, I, I have that percentage chance. So you, you see these experts say such and such may do this or can do this. Uh, a good example is when Fauci was talking about the, uh, the way the virus in a, in a, a vaccinated person can be in their nasal cavity and they could still expel the virus and it may infect somebody. Yeah. It's a one in some something million chance that your snot rocket gets into somebody else's system and infects them. So he can say that honestly, 
but it's not bloody likely that it's going to happen. So that they're using that language to, to spread these messages. So the data suggests that you are as immune, uh, you have the same immune response from having the disease than getting the vaccine. So and again, I'll bring up those sources as we, as we go through this. So that's point number three. And point number four is the data suggests that you, and this is one thing they're using to spread the, uh, the, the notion that you should get the vaccine, even though you've been infected, is you have a higher antibody response from the first shot if you've had COVID before. That's not necessarily a good thing. Mm -hmm. Because your antibody response, uh, if you gave me the, the, the measles or mumps shot right now, I could go into uh, uh, an autoimmune response because I've had it as a child, right? So antibody response is a good indicator of something, but it doesn't necessarily mean you had a better immune response. Uh, freaking allergies are an antibody response to something that's not threatening to your system, right? No. So it's not, it, it may say that you have a higher immunity later, but it also may say that you've had COVID before and your body already has the memory for it, whether you had antibodies in your system or just the T cell, B cell memory of it. So all it tells you is you, ha you have the memory for it. On the flip side of that is that higher immune response can, is the cause of the side effects. So what we see from the data and also stuff I have queued up to bring up is a higher incidence of side effects from the vaccine in previously infected individuals than people who have never had COVID. In fact, headlines suggest that you may know if you've had COVID before, not knowingly, by your response from the first injection of the vaccine. Mm -hmm. So the discussion needs to take a totally different turn. First of all, if you've had COVID documented and symptomatic, it's not necessarily a good idea to get it because your risk is uh, somewhere between three and four times higher than have, uh, of having major side effects, including possibly permanent ones in your lymph nodes uh, and what the number will never know because you can't have it in the study because you need consent for HIPAA laws is how many people died that had COVID before and got the vaccine versus how many never had COVID and got the vaccine. So we'll never know that number. But the long-term effects with, uh, again, the lymph nodes especially, is about four times the rate. Why take that risk if you have the same immunity? Why take the risk if you're not getting any benefit from it? So that's my stance on that. And that's where I think the conversation should go is if you've had COVID before, the vaccine is going to do nothing for you. Yeah. Uh, and that's not the conversation that's having. Everything is black and white. There is no... There, there is no discussion of trade-offs. It, it is either you're a science denier uh, uh, who's endangering grandma because you won't get the vaccine, or it's you're, you're a big government authoritarian who's trying to inject me with 5G. And it's, I'm, I'm, being, I'm being flippant there, but- the, Yeah, the I know. I, well, no, it's actually serious because that, yeah. that's why the discussion is so hard is because you have those extremes. And, 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 and I, I'll, I'll, I'll make a- an illustration of how stupidly politicized this is, and this isn't an original thought, but it bears repeating as often as possible. If the people who are now pushing the vaccine, who were anti-vaxxers before, but if the people who, were, who are now pushing hard for the vaccine really wanted people to get vaccinated, why is former President Donald Trump still blackballed from all mainstream media and social media? Uh, if, if again, from, from the people who are pushing the narrative uh, right now, it's Republicans, Trump supporters at all who are the ones who are keeping us from reaching a higher level of vaccination. Okay, well, if you really want people to be vaccinated, if, if you really care about the vaccination rate and the spread of COVID and the general health of the populace, why has why has Donald Trump not been invited to speak on these things? Because he, 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 he is on the record repeatedly of urging people to get the vaccination. But you wouldn't know that unless you listen to these conservative sources or go looking for it. 
it's it's not there it's never mentioned in fact uh the opposite they do the opposite at the white house press briefings where they constantly uh trash the previous administration well wait a minute when it comes to this specific issue uh you're being disingenuous which is a polite way of saying you're lying because the vaccine was created by and the warp speed uh project was initiated under trump which allowed for the rapid release of the vaccine well, why aren't you saying that if you, if your contention is that trump supporters are resisting the vaccine and they need to for their own good in the health of society it, it, it it's that and and the, the just the lack of understanding what a vaccine does uh your, your first shot of the vaccine is basically your first infection. And then the second shot is your second infection. And they, they, they space it out. So your body has time to adapt to it. Right. Uh, and so what you see in, in uh, uh, people who have previously been infected, whether they knew it or not, is a higher response with that first shot. And so the discussion should, again, this is, this is where it, loses the general public because it becomes nuanced okay if you've had covid and it's documented and you had symptoms probably don't need the shot and you're taking a risk to do it Mm -hmm. if you didn't know you had covid but you get the first shot of the vaccine and you have an extreme immune response guess what it probably means you had it before or a high exposure to it before and you're asymptomatic and you probably should stop there and then the third is if you have never had covid or you you probably should have the vaccine because we're in this process uh, and get both shots, et cetera. But then the crowd that says, well, we don't know when we're talking immunity, uh, we don't know why the reaction to the first shot in previously infected individuals is greater than the second shot in uninfected individuals, right? So that that's one of the conversations in the scientific community and they're just kind of throwing it to the side uh it's probably because having the disease gives you a higher immune response and so when you get that first shot it's greater than the second shot in in regular vaccinated individual individuals because you have that memory in your system immune system has memory it's not about antibodies antibodies is a distraction in the conversation antibodies is how you tell you've been recently infected you're you can take my blood and you're not going to find a single measles or mumps antibody in my body but i was vaccinated when i was a child and if i come across it in nature i will be i will have a defense against it because i was vaccinated as a child antibodies is a distraction it should be a test we do before we inject somebody for sure uh to make sure that they're not currently hosting them uh but it, it's the T cell and B cell memory that is important. And to me, the evidence suggests because we have a greater response in infected individuals from that first injection with the vaccine is we have a greater immune memory versus the vaccine on the second shot. So it, it's actually the reverse of the conversation that's going now. Now, again, I have to use the word may because we don't know, but to me, that evidence pushes in that direction versus the other way around. Uh, do we want to get into the articles or? Yeah, I mean, you, you've been saying you should, uh, the, it, we, we should show where all these sources are coming from. Um, mm-hmm. and, and this is why the idea of mandates uh, are not only um what i i believe politically immoral uh but they are uh factually problematic and possibly uh disastrous well yeah you you want to talk about compassion saving lives right Uh so if i'm more likely to have all the side effects i'm more likely to have all the long-term side effects including death Uh right so you could be killing people by forcing them to get yep. vaccinated. And we got about 40 million people have already had COVID in the United States. If the death rate is 0.01 of that 40 million, we can do the math. 40 million times 0.01, whoops. 
is 40,000. Did I do 400,000 yeah, people? Yeah. 40,000 people you killed, right? If the death rate is 0 0.01. Uh, first so, thing should be up, right? Yep. Yeah. So we're still looking at the uh, vaccine side effects WebMD page here. Yeah. And, and th this is why this is this should be a conversation not political points shouted back and forth because people are going to have to evaluate the risks and rewards for themselves mm -hmm. and make and this, that decision and this they is can't where I'm pissed do that off if they don't the have data this, uh, they're they're just spewing the the rhetoric because there's no yep. risk yep yep yeah so this is webmd and it's uh going through some some studies especially out of uh, the uk uh of increased immune response and in people who have had covid versus people who have not had covid uh going into their vaccination and uh, uh giving some of the numbers but i got the uh, actual studies uh behind it as well so the, the different percentages and again this is webmd on the vaccines. But the main point of this one is if you didn't know you had COVID and you have this extreme reaction, it probably is an indication that you, you have had it in the past, uh, which is where my argument of if that happens to you, you probably should be wary of going into that second shot. Uh, now, is this one of the studies that you, you texted me about a couple that you were reading that demonstrated fairly conclusively that the the talking point is wrong but yet then in their conclusion they still follow the talking point of but you should still get vaccinated yeah and uh i needed to, to organize these a little better but uh, i was doing it just real quickly before we got on uh this one i have up right now uh here here you have in the conclusion uh individuals who have had sars cov 2 are unlikely to benefit from the vaccination. So this is to bring back my point that uh -huh. you, you're having the same immune response. Uh, and again, experts say versus what the actual studies show. Yeah. Uh, and so the, that there's one there and that was out of uh, the uh, this Med RX publication. Uh, yeah, no significant difference between the anti-spike uh, antibodies versus previously infected versus those that were uh, vaccinated. So there's another one to support that. Uh, Doctors still recommend getting vaccinated. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. And this is what I was talking about. So this is what you were just bringing up is this Healthline article linked all of the ones I just brought up before a plus whoop, not that one the this one this is the one i was looking for right here vaccine uh, side effects yeah uh vaccine side effects and this one actually uh kind of ticked me off to a, a large degree because normally when we do the abbreviations uh when we're writing a scientific paper you do it in a way to make the article more clear and so they actually did it in reverse so normally you would, you would uh, bring this up and then call it Pfizer or something to go through the article so you know what you're talking about. And you would, say, you would have this code up and say, that's the AstraZeneca. And then from then on, you would say AstraZeneca, but look what they did. They used the, the technical terms from then on or instead of the abbreviation, and it makes it really hard to read. So some... Joe Blow that's trying to get a better uh, idea of what they're doing is going to read that and get lost because they keep trying, oh, what, what's a C-H-A-D-O? I have to go back to the beginning and, oh, oh, oh that's AstraZeneca. And then they get, oh, well, BTN, oh, no, that, oh, oh, that was Pfizer. So they have to keep going back and forth and they're going to get frustrated with the article or not mm -hmm. get anything out of it. Uh, but uh, this goes through and in the findings, for those that want to actually go through it is you're seeing 
uh, about a, a three to four times rate of uh, side effects in someone who was previously infected with uh, COVID versus someone who's going into the vaccine having never been exposed to it. Uh, and that number is actually kind of, uh, remind me to say why that number is kind of skewed in a little bit. I think it'll okay. muddy the water right now. But then uh, is this the one that, oh yeah. And so, so now we've got the interpretation uh, that both vaccines decrease the risk of, of, of COVID-2 after 12 days and uh, frequencies were lower than reported. And that was their conclusion from the whole thing. So get vaccinated when the whole data set shows that, yes, it's lower than the original trials, but in, in those that were previously infected, you're looking at a three to four times rate of side effect. So, and we got a nice big long conflict of interest statement to go with that, but they're all funded by the NIH and whatever the ZO Global Corporation is, NIH right here, National Institute of Health Research. Uh, and this is where I get a little bit cynical here. Uh, well, the cynical side of me said the scientists are in, uh, in the pocket, uh, getting, getting the money in the pocket. Mm. But then I, I slept on it a little bit. And uh, the other part of me says, what if they can't even get published unless they say that? And so they're making the decision, I'm going to get published and hope people read the data versus just my little blurb at the end of my yeah. conclusion. Uh, so that's the, 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 the uh, generous side of me. The cynical side is that it's you, scientific research is an industry and these people need to make sure that yeah. the funding keeps coming into their departments. So uh, probably it's a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Uh, but th that's the corruption of the scientific community is these people have to get funded. And when you really think about it, again, back to our Fauci statement of how he should have been removed, he's at ultimately at the top of that funding. Because if you don't have yep. NIH support, which he's the, in charge of, then you have no funding, whether you're at a major university or, or, or a private company. Yeah. Uh, but instead, we're just going to talking points and shout at each other. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so now, ultimately, I, the data suggests that. And how, how was that number skewed? Because I'm, I'm, I have a guess on. Oh, what you're going to say? Yeah, the number is skewed because in the previously infected crowd, they were documented to be infected. So you have it. That that number is probably correct. So they had this percentage of side effects from that crowd, from that cohort. In the previously unaffected or uninfected crowd, we had we also include the people who were never documented yeah. to be infected. So you could have that that in that crowd, you have all of the people that have that initial great response because they were previously infected but didn't know it. So that actually bumps that number up. The only thing that can bring the number down from the previously infected is false positives on their test. Yeah. So, so I think the number of asymptomatic people that ended up getting vaccinated would be greater than the pre than the number of false positives in the, uh, the other, especially since most of them were symptomatic. Yeah. Um, and, uh, well, it, this is, something that that has annoyed me about the whole political politicization of all this is that as i said one of the things that annoys me is that there's no acknowledgement of these previous stances um but if there is they tend to say well the science has changed the science has evolved no it hasn't what's ev what's evolved is what you're allowing to be said because there were plenty of there have been plenty of contrary voices along the way some of whom are being proven right or being proven probably right probably i guess I saw, is more accurate oh, to I say. Saw something came across my twitter feed the other day it was like so i think the conspiracy theorists are up by 80 by now <laughs> <laughs> but uh here here th this one is in jama and this was uh the one that concluded that uh previously infected basically has the same uh protection look at mm -hmm. the the number of participants here 
we've got 261,000 people in this study. That's a pretty damn good. That's a lot for yeah, yeah. that. That's a for, lot for anyone who uh, doesn't know. That's a lot. So when you're talking about your your error rate, the more people you have, mm-hmm. the less likely individual uh, outcomes are going to influence the data. And uh, one reason I really like this one is because it was so massive. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, and again, we just ended up with a with a one to one rate and versus a. Uh, basically 400% increase in your, uh, if you've never had COVID or the vaccine to your uh, likelihood of getting uh, infected. So, and, and this one actually, they made it simple. So I was talking about earlier. So they bring up, where did I? So they bring up the, uh, the technical term, but then they make it clear. If I'm, if I'm talking about this, I'm going to refer to it as Pfizer. If I'm talking about mRNA one two seven three, I'm going to refer to it as Moderna, and so they they went through. So now you have Moderna and Pfizer as the as the term. So it makes it clear and easy to read, uh, whereas the other one kind of hid things in uh, mm-hmm. in uh, science speak. So we should say, I guess. Uh, but yeah, it's it, it's an integrity issue, and it's killing people. Yep. Uh, I can't get funding for this, so I'm not going to. I'm, I'm going to have this, 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 this uh, conclusion on my paper. And the good news is the data comes out with it, so someone like me can look through it. The bad news is the media can say experts say this. All they report on is the conclusion. All mm-hmm. they report on is the conclusion. So yeah, the, the media is actually being honest. Experts say get the vaccine even if you've had COVID, but the data doesn't cor- uh, correlate to the results of the study or, or the, the 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 conclusion they came up with. So the results of the study don't correlate with the the actual blurb they had at the end. And uh, one is their subjective opinion on what they found versus what actually exists. And we're in this this stage where. Uh, reality is subjective and it's not true. And, and go, going back to the polit- politicization of it, uh, let's go all the way back to the beginning when uh, the WHO was reporting that there is no human to human transmission. Well, why were they reporting that? Well, because China said so. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, we have to be allowed to say, wait a minute, can we trust them? We have to be allowed to say, wait a minute, what about these people? who literally fled the country and sought asylum because they were doctors uh, uh, going against the party line saying, no, no, there is human to human transmission. What about the fact that China is saying there's no human to human transmission, but they're banning internal domestic travel in and out of Wuhan while they're allowing international travel. But if you go by the you know, YouTube social media guidelines, no, no, you can't contradict the who you can't contradict the CDC. What if they're wrong? Well, what about the who says from their investigatory panel that uh, there was no evidence of lab leak, but the only Western representative to that panel was Dazic? <laughs> I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, there you go. There's there's news to you and our audience. Uh, Dazic, who was giving money to the Wuhan lab for uh, certain types of research that start with gain of function. Yes. So, uh, so for anyone who, who doesn't know or hasn't been following along, um, gain of function research was, was banned in the United States and how they got around this, the people who thought it was important and they have, they have some valid arguments, but instead of making those valid arguments and getting ban of, or getting gain of function reinstated in the United States, they just outsourced it and they well, started it, giving it was, funding. That was retracted though in the last several years too. Yes. It was banned during the Obama years, but it was retracted uh, during Trump. Yeah, that was that that's a whole nother because kettle they do of fish. they do it they do it apparently at UTMB as well. Okay. That that's a whole nother kettle of fish that I don't want to get into. The the point being that not only was there a ban here, but then at some point, I don't remember if this was concurrent with that. Um, well, there's there's overlap though because the, yeah. the funding was happening during the ban, 
And uh, part of that was supposed to be at some point was was also supposed to include giving funding to international organizations who were doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, but the um, there were allowed to be exceptions. And the Wuhan lab was one of these exceptions. And Dazik was the guy who was basically the point man for that funding. Let me let me uh, do something here before we get uh, into a situation of liability. Uh, let me put it on on the record here that we are not giving medical advice nope. and we are just discussing our opinion on what the discussion should be around and ask your doctor talk to your doctor and in and, the same and way that and, and if advertisements you want to for drugs say consult your doctor if yeah here are yeah. some things you should know now consult your doctor to see if this is right for you we're just giving our opinions on things to chew on based on the data we have uh, and, and basically our hope that this can be part of the discussion. That's all we want is this to be part of the discussion, not a, your ultimate choice. I know what my choice is. You know what your choice is. Uh, Each individual is going to have to figure that out for themselves with hopefully some, con some personal consultation with an actual medical professional. But exactly. that's again, that's up to the individual to make their own decision based on the data they have. And they can't make informed decisions if they don't have data. Exactly. And the only thing I would encourage is if your medical professional is not willing to have the conversation in an adult mm -hmm. way, get a different mm -hmm. medical professional. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. That's, that's what I will encourage because if they're going to just spew ad hominem, uh, arguments towards you and say, just listen to me. That's different than someone who's willing to explain the cost benefit ratio to you. Yep. Uh, and you should do that with everything, whether it's your finance, finance. Yep. Uh, We've talked about that versus... when it comes to personal training is if, if yeah. you, if you have a, a personal trainer that won't uh, have a discussion with you, won't explain things with you or, mm -hmm. or, you know, like in this instance, say, I'm not sure, let me get back to you. You know, that, that may be what a doc, what your doctor says, because maybe they haven't looked into these specific things that we're bringing up again, because it's kind of hard to find some of this data it's out there, but it's, it's not in the mainstream. The biggest article that we have found was that vanity fair one, which again, it's in vanity fair. Mm -hmm. How many medical professionals are reading that? I don't know, but well, uh, not a ton. And on the things I was talking about with the previous infected, uh, would, you know, there, there are big articles out there because I brought up uh, the, the WebMD article mm -hmm. and also the Healthline article. And they go through all of the things we talked about only at the very end to cover their ass with the government and say, uh, go ahead and do it. Right? Yeah. And it, it, that's what annoyed me when we were talking was that you, you, you've got all this data that says that paints a very pretty picture. And then at the very end, you say, there's no picture. There's nothing, nothing to see here. Uh, there's nothing behind that curtain. Don't look. Which look behind the curtain, <laughs> look behind the curtain. That's, that's, yeah. that's a good place to, to leave off. Cause I need to go do for some front squats. Yeah. Um, and and I, I think we we've made our point of, you know, this isn't this isn't just YouTubers, conspiracy theorists, whatever. No, there's actual data here that make should make people raise their hand and go, wait a minute. And, and like the John Ziegler article I brought up, if you don't want this politicized, stop politicizing it. Yeah. Okay. So and, and part of that politicization is the the shutting down of conversation, the shutting down of questions and debate and discussion. Uh, yeah, and that, that's part of the problem with this whole, uh, what, what do we want to call it, censorship or cancel culture right. or, or whatever, is it's labeling this conspiracy theory with people who just want to say why or, or how is this happening or ask what, why and how should never be censored. Mm -hmm. the, the conclusions, maybe, but what, why and how should never be yes. censored. Uh, and that, that's all anybody's been asking so far. Yes. Yeah. There, there's a, there's a big difference between 
you asking those questions that you just did, like say specifically, uh, because now we're allowed to talk about the lab leak theory all of a sudden, uh, there's a big difference between you asking those very legitimate questions and me spinning some yarn about, you know, uh, uh, some plot out of a thriller novel about, you know, China uh, backed by the Gates Foundation, uh, running this black flag operation to crash the world economy so that they can instant. Okay. Yeah. Now we're going hey, to, you, you can't forget Epstein Island. You got to throw that in Epstein there Island's in there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They, 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 they had to distract us while they got into the vault in Epstein Island and get out the secret and drinking microfilm. children's blood to stay yeah. young. Do they, do they still have microfilm? How old am I? Uh, okay. <laughs> anyway, it still <laughs> exists. Yes. <laughs> USB drive. I don't know. Anyway, that's a conspiracy theory. That's where you start spinning conclusions that are far-fetched where yet like you were saying about experts say okay well yeah maybe that happened but come on now let's let's be real and let's focus on what we can be more certain about okay well, and, 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 and that's so, the so question this is something, you're asking this is something people can learn from legitimate scientific community is th listen to the terminology uh okay. when i say so so the hardest thing to say in the english language is i was wrong right and when you use certain language, and I think Peterson touches on this with being precise in your speech, is if I say the data suggests this, or the literature shows that this is probably X, Y, Z, I can, when new data comes out, I can easily say, well, now the data says this, mm -hmm. because I don't have to say I was wrong, because I wasn't wrong. The data as I currently had it was X, Y, Z. And if new data comes out, I can change my opinion without being wrong. So if you speak in the proper way, you don't have to say I was wrong. There's no emotional investment to it. You just say, you know what? Based on the information I had at the time, I still would stand by that decision I made, but now I have new information. Mm -hmm. And now that I have new information, and this is back to, we can go all the way back to the beginning of this conversation with Fauci. He could, he could easily come out and say, based on the information I had last year, I made those recommendations, but now I have new information. And everybody probably would have accepted that. But now he just ignores yeah. the fact that he made those recommendations. And, 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 and th I've mentioned this before, and this is why turning everything political, not just when it comes to, to this virus of unknown origins, um, turning everything political is disastrous because politics is a zero sum game. It is win or lose. Uh, either, either I convince you that I'm right and you vote for me or I don't and I lose. So turning everything political turns everything black or white, binary, zero sum, except almost all of life is not that. And, and we need to be able to have open and frank discussions without it turning into that. And the more certain you are about the quote unquote opinion you have, the more emotional investment you have, the more you're going to double down. Yes. And again, just say state things as they are versus how you want them to be. Yes. And that, that's all I did. What the data I presented was that uh, natural immunity is at minimum the same as vaccinated immunity. It, my opinion is it could be more because you've ex been exposed to, to more of the virus, mm -hmm. but we don't know that yet. I don't know that yet. I can't, I can't provide data for that yet. I can just look at history of viruses in, in, in immunity. Uh, but the data suggests that you're at minimum the same. The data suggests that you are a higher risk to have side effects from the vaccine if you've previously been, been infected. And now I can make the risk reward. And yep. frankly, I, I'm learning how to mitigate it because of the, the new data on the brain damage. Uh, but at the same time, why would I expose myself to possible complications in, 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 to include furthering that damage by taking a vaccine that I don't need. And so these are the data points. This is my conclusion from the data points. If we get something new in the future, I will change that conclusion. And the fact that the CDC says based on data that 
we are not releasing to you is very disturbing because it, it, it's actually not legal for them to not release it to us because they're a public entity. Yeah. But, uh, uh, so we, we can only base, let's go back to episode one, which nobody probably watched because we didn't have video, but uh, you're only as good as the information you have. And yeah. I just presented to you the best information we have because it uh, scouring PubMed and Google Scholar and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's all there was uh, because of funding main, mainly. But I, I presented the, the evidence we have. If somebody has different evidence, they need to present it. Yeah. And then we make our opinions from there and our choices. Yep. That's right. a good place to leave it off. Yep. All right. Well, I will see you next time. You can go to your front squats. I'll Adios. probably take a poop and a nap. <laughs>